Hi everybody, I'm Laurie Cadden and this is the Lackawanna and Luzerne Counties Medical Society Public Health Education Series. Today we were here, we are here at the beautiful uh, Public Square in Wilkes-Barre and we are here for Mondays at Wilkes-Barre and we are here for Mondays at the market. It's a little bit of a collaboration of some wonderful organizations that are gathering to help you feel better. Hi, I'm here with Paul Ginter and he is with the Wilkes-Barre City Health Department. Paul, you got a grant to do all this wonderful stuff and bring people together here on what is called Monday, Mondays at the Market. Yes. Every Monday yes. here. And what are the months? Well, it's supposed as to go through October. Nice? Well, okay. yeah, and the, and we have the farmers here to yeah. participate. To bring their stuff, yeah. Right. So we are here in this beautiful, I love this this uh, public square. It's so neat. It's neat to be outside of Lackawanna County and down here in Luzerne. Yeah. I love it. So, Paul, why don't you tell everybody how you, what you, why you wanted to do this and how, what you did to get this all together. Okay, this was a, this was a, a grant, a state grant passed down uh, from the uh, state health department that we applied for and were awarded it's called safe and healthy communities and there's various uh, various activities that we are supposed to uh, provide one was uh, providing more access to uh, healthy foods and we had decided to that the area could definitely use more than one farmers market more than one day so and we thought Monday would be a possibly a, a good day and we had contacted many of our partners that we partner with uh, and they were all on board we wor are working with uh, Luzerne County Transit Authority who is uh, busing people in uh -huh. uh, for free and uh, with other partners such as WIC, uh, Maternal and Family Health Services, uh, CEO, Commission on Economic Opportunity, uh, they've been here doing uh, healthy food demonstrations, cooking. Mm -hmm. So, How's that been working out? Oh, it's been People very, like it. very good, yeah. And how long has it been going on? It's through sometime in October when the weather stays nice. When did you start it? It started in uh, uh, July. July, okay. Uh, it, next year, we'll be more organized. This was a, a rush the beginning, effort. yeah. It's always, yeah. A, yeah, it's what uh, happens with first time. But uh, it's, it's going real well. Yeah. We... Uh, it's a shame there's no farmers right now here. Yeah. However, uh, a lot of the partners choose to still be here and we are just providing uh, information on their uh, agencies and such. And so when the farmers were here, because obviously this is now it's, you know, getting, gets a little bit later, so it's a little harder. So sometimes with, um, um, in July and August, it's beautiful time for them yeah. to be here. Were they enjoying it? Did they feel as much of a benefit as the people who were coming to it? Yes, I would say for the most part they have. Uh, they probably would have liked more, but it was a new, it was new and a lot of people weren't used to it yet. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing we did is uh, we applied for uh, the EBT, which is Electronic Benefit Transfer, to enable all the farmers to accept uh, access, food stamps, uh, yeah, which and what is they wonderful. do. Yeah, which they haven't been able to do until uh, this year, That's so now wonderful. we're doing that. So, so then do you think then going forward now, as the, you know it works, you just have to tweak, Paul, like anything new, you realize what you did right and wrong and you make it better the next year and going it forward. Needs to be so tweaked. that's going to be wonderful though for them to continue to use that because yeah. so many vouchers are given to senior citizens or people who need help to right. get healthy foods. Right. So that's wonderful. Well, yeah. congratulations on this and Thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll come down next year and see and we'll see how you can say Do. this is the beginning and we'll make it all we'll start when the farmers are here and everyone's and everything's been tweaked right so thank you very much thank you thanks Paul
We're here with Sarah, Sarah Moralia. Sarah, did I get it right? You got it yes. right, yes. The G is silent. The G is silent. Sarah is with Geisinger Health and Wellness, and Sarah is here at Mondays at the Market, and she is doing blood pressure checks, which yeah. is so important for people to understand. Yes. Sarah, how is the reception when people sit? Do they say, ah, my blood pressure is fine, and you're going to say, okay, well, we'll wait and see. What happens when they, the person, the confident, it's going to be great, and that you say, ah, you're a little high. What, what, how do they react to it, and what do you tell them they should do? Well, first of all, what we do is, and this is very important, we say it's awesome that you made the first step to come right. and get it checked because prevention is key. And just by you coming over here, getting it checked, that's number one. Number two is even if it's not where we think it is, we give you a ton of options that you can take that can either you know reduce the blood pressure or you know just some other lifestyle factors you can change in order to just overall be more healthy and then also get that blood pressure down. So when do you feel that people are reluctant to sit down there when they say, oh, thank you, or you might give them some information on, on blood pressure, but why are people so nervous or do you not see that? They don't want to know almost. Is it fear of the, the unknown or yes, what do you think it yes. is? Yeah, well, I'm sure there's fear of the unknown. We actually see both. So sometimes we get the reluctant people that, you know, oh, I don't want to get it checked. I already know what it is. But then sometimes we also get the other side of people that are like, you know what? I want to get it checked. You know, I've been to the doctor. I'm on, you know, taking my medication or you know I'm doing exercising or you know just overall trying to be healthier let me get it checked so we see both actually and for the reluctant people actually what we do is you know we just try to get them to the table and then we go from there and you know what's neat I think when the person who as you say has been trying to in change their life for and, and say they had no issues at all but they're just trying to be healthier exercising eating better trying to do all the things related to better health and they sit down and they get their blood pressure checked it's sort of a good sign when you know you can almost say oh my god I'm doing it I'm doing it right because my blood pressure's in check Exactly. Right, because that's so important it's to have so important. normal blood pressure. Right, exactly. You know, it's awesome to see when people are making lifestyle changes, you know, whether it be diet, exercise, trying to limit their stress, what have you, whatever it may be, and they come over to your table and they see that blood pressure going down. It's an awesome feeling just to help them, you know, get that recognition and then also just you know, solidify that success. So we had, we met with Paul before. He's talked about the grant to get everybody here and be part of better eating and better wellness in general. What were, I'm sure when Guy Singer had the opportunity to be here, they said, hey, we're gonna do that. So what benefit do you see that has it, this has given Guy Singer for you to be here in the public? Wow, that's a great question. So yeah, when they came on board, you know, our wellness specialist came out and we we're like, we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it on Mondays. And so a bunch of us has been out here and the best part of it, you know, it's getting not only the name out there, but then also getting out those health and wellness health and wellness, you know, options for them and then also just that education. You know, sometimes some of the most, you know, simple things can be done just to overall impact people's health and that's the best thing right there. And Guy Singer's always there to help you. Yes, right? absolutely. You Anytime. There you go. Sarah, thank you very much. No problem. Thank You're you. Meeting with Sarah. Say it, Sarah. Moralia. Moralia. I am here with Peggy Austin. R-N, you know my mother's a nurse and we call her Ann Cadden R-N, how about that? Mm. So maybe you should go by Peggy Austin R-N. Okay. Doesn't that sound good, like a it show or something? Good. There we it go, does Peggy. Sound good. Anyway, Peggy and I just met and I love her already. Peggy is with Guy Singer and she is, in the, she is with the trauma department. Peggy, you're here, again, we're, we're doing all of these, as many uh, vendors as we can, to talk a little bit about the importance of Mondays at the Market and the wellness aspect of it. And from a trauma standpoint at Guy Singer, we, we talked a little bit, I said, Peg, I know what trauma means, but what would be this purpose? So explain what it is, because it made perfect sense to me, the preventative end of it. Right. Um, one of our initiatives is to go out into the community and look at where our injuries are coming from. Uh, some of the injuries are falls in our older adults, impaired driving, um, distracted driving, etc. So we provide to the community information on preventing these injuries, uh, perhaps deaths in some cases, uh, different programs Geisinger has, such as our Healthy Steps program to help our older adults. Uh, we also have impaired and distracted driving programs. So we want the community to be aware of these, to be aware of some of the simple things they can do to prevent these types of injuries. 
and to answer any questions they may have. So Peg, another thing I'm sure, as, as we're, you're talking, I'm thinking in the summertime, like safety and pools and all the things, because children and issues that you have with, with kids, do you do that kind of stuff too? Right. To try to uh, let people understand, mm -hmm. even if you don't, that's a, a good way to look at it, right? Know how to make sure when you're in a pool you have all those preventative measures, right. because that leads to a trauma incident. Yes. yes, at the Market Mondays here, Every week we kind of changed the focus of what we were doing. Okay. Over the summer months we had some information and provided uh, pool, bicycle safety information, things of that nature, um, first aid information, and in the fall we started with our back to school information, bus safety, etc. cetera, um, around uh, the uh, for the, you mean for the buses? For the buses, and stuff? for getting on and have, off buses. That's a good idea, though. A good way to, a good segue. Are there seatbelts on buses now? Some, some do, are, and some do don't. not. Okay, man. Um, just how they should be acting on the buses, getting on and off the buses. What should happen? Should they drop something getting on or off the bus? And the importance of listening to the bus driver mm -hmm. and the crossing guards. Right, right. Uh, so we provided all that kind of information. Now we're focusing on some back to school stuff. Um, impaired impair, uh, driving, distracted driving, etc. Because we have are seeing more and more. Uh, next week we're going to focus on winter driving because we're going into that winter season mm -hmm. in a few months. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, on a day like today, it's beautiful. Peg, and here we are talking, here we are about, talking winter. about it. But we have well, to be prepared. So I asked Sarah at Geisinger before. I want to ask you too the importance that you see as, as from Geisinger's aspect, um, looking at this actual happening and hopefully goes on year after yes. year. How important is it to Geisinger to be here? It's very important. We can meet the community. We can impact hundreds of people at events like this. Uh, they're coming out on their lunch hours, they're coming on their way to work, on their way home, and it's a casual atmosphere. We can interact with them. There's multiple aspects here that they can talk to, the health plan, um, us from trauma, and they can get a lot of information at one site. There you go. Well, Peg, thank you very much. You thank did you. did a good job. Thank so you. So everybody, this has been Peggy Austin, RN. Thank you. I am here with Marqueen Klemchuk, who is with Life Guy Singer, and we were talking about your name, Marqueen, how different, how unique, and I said, when I first met you, you had to. Did you meet, do you ever know anybody by this name? I know one other person named Marqueen. At, and you said in Danville, in at Danville, Guy Singer. At Guy Singer. How, how weird that? is that? Two of us. And do, you, and do you, like, are you friends with her now? Have you bonded a little? I haven't, no. Well, but you're going to have to do that. I will do that, Because names yes. have that way of doing that. Yes. you got to stick together. <laughs> so tell everybody, if you would, Marqueen, why it's important and why Life Guy Singer in particular would want to be here at Mondays at, at the market, here on Public Square in Wilkes-Barre. It's so important. It's a way to get to the public. It's a way to see. I know Guy Singer is everywhere and does everything. But why specifically Life Guy Singer for here? And if you could explain that and what Life Guy Singer actually means in case someone out there doesn't know. Definitely. Um, Life Geisinger is actually, um, it stands for Living Independently for the Elderly. I didn't know that. Yes. Oh. So what we are is we are an alternative to nursing home care. Okay. So if someone um, is really struggling in their home, they're having a hard time um, being able to complete their daily living, whether it's cooking, cleaning, they're having a hard time getting to their doctor's appointments and things like that, we can provide the care, the intervention that they need to stay at home and be independent. I love as it. As long as possible. And then you have your vans that pick everybody up and take them. That's wonderful yes. too. How does that work? Um, if you're a participant of our program, basically what we do is we provide transportation not only to the center, which is located at Geisinger South, um, but we also provide transportation to doctor's appointments. I love it. So the goal is to keep people healthy. And, so, and as independent as possible exactly. with, with the aid of something that they may no longer be able to do or have a family member to be able to take them. Sometimes family members are out of town. Right. Sometimes they're just not able themselves because they work full time. They've got their own children. They've got a lot to worry about. This provides care for people so that when they do visit, when family do visit, it's a quality of a visit rather than having, having to, to get, drive them everywhere. And, yes, take them to appointments or clean their home. We can manage all that. And, and how, that. how do, do you think the people who take advantage and who participate in Life Guy Singer, do they, I'm sure you do surveys and get feedback, what's the general impression that they have that Guy Singer does stuff like this? 
I think the big thing with Geisinger, Life Geisinger, is the fact that if we weren't here, several of our participants, many of our participants would be in a nursing home. Mm -hmm. This provides the care that a person needs. So therefore, someone who really wants to be home we provide that opportunity and that, that option for them to be home. I love it. Well, as I said before, Guy Singer is huge. It's all over. And I'm speaking to many of your um, different uh, departments here. Mm -hmm. And it really makes a difference that someone as big and as involved as Guy Singer is that, that you're here. And that's what I, when I say involved, you guys are everywhere, which is a wonderful thing. And definitely that must make you proud to be part of that too, it, right? It's a really neat, it's a yeah. neat organization. I know. It's, a, you know it's, it's everywhere, like you said. Yeah. And the good thing with being here at the um, Mondays on the Market is the fact that you can see so many people who walk by that maybe they're not struggling, but they've got a loved one or a neighbor or someone. So we can get the word out about the fact that there is something out here for people that they don't have to struggle by themselves. That that's we're here a good for them. way. That's a good way to do it. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for thank having you. me. I appreciate it. Again, get to know her real quick. Her name is Marque Marqueen Klimchuk. Thank you, Marqueen. Thank you very much. I am here with two handsome dudes, two incredibly fortunate, healthy now yes. men. We have Keith Chalmers, Chalmers on one side who has a double lung transplant. And to my left, we have Tony Harding who has, do you have two, two kidney? I have two kidney transplants, one in 2002 and one in 2015. Oh my God, how are you feeling? Wonderful, like a million dollars. And how long did it take for that match to happen? The first match was from my sister, so wow. so that was we. The first one was easy. The second one, I had a five percent chance of finding one, but I got one in fifteen months. Wow! Which, so the first one is still going straight. No, you had that. Is that the, the one you had every? Okay. The first one failed okay. uh, in two thousand fourteen. And that's common, though, Tony. Yeah, right? That can have happen. Yeah, they don't have to last forever. You know, they don't last forever. So I knew eventually I might need another one, and in two thousand fourteen, that's when it failed. And who? How about the second one? Was that a donor other it, than it your a, family? It was a deceased donor. I don't know who my donor was. Wow. Someone decided that they wanted to become an organ donor, and when that thirty-two-year-old man passed away, I was lucky enough and blessed to get his kidney. And you're feeling good. Wonderful. Notice his shirt too, Mark. Get it real good. West Scranton West, Invaders. invaders. Yes. I'm here in Wilkes-Barre and we found a West Scranton Invader. How about it? Geek. That's right. You're Come not on a West now. Scranton Invader. Where no, are you I'm from? Not. I'm from Wilkes-Barre. Wilkes-Barre. So yes. you have, God bless you, a double right. lung transplant. Yes, yes. Well, how, what, t did, were they, you have to get them together? I don't together. know. Together. I got it at one me. time. Okay. Uh, and how long ago? This was uh, two and a half years ago. And you're feeling good? I feel great. And how about when it comes to the drugs and the different things you have to take? You have to be very careful and pay attention to right. what you're told, right? I have right? to take uh, my medication every day, twice a day, every 12 hours. Uh, I take maybe 20 uh, pills in the morning and maybe about 10 in the evening. Mm -hmm. But it's all worth it, But it's right? all worth it. Now, why, all worth what it. happened to you? That if, Can you talk about why you needed I have interstitial lung disease. Uh, I couldn't breathe any longer. I could not live outside the hospital any longer. Uh, on uh, uh, February 26th, I got sick and went into a guy singer, and they flew me down to Philly. And uh, I was in the hospital. I got on the list March 12th, and I had the operation on March 29th. Wow. To God be the glory. Oh, my. You yes. are incredible. Yes. And you're feeling good and you can I feel now, great. Now, my question is, have you run any marathons? Or Not yet, but I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm on tell. my way. I yes, I am. I can tell. Yeah. Now, you tell me, Tony, this guy's all revved up about it. It has to make you very... I don't know, grateful every day a with this absolutely. beautiful day. If it's rainy, soggy, it doesn't matter. It, your life is it, good. It really is because today's Monday, and Monday was my day for dialysis. So instead of being outside in this beautiful day, I'd be sitting in a dialysis chair four hours a day, three days a week for the rest of my life. And that's completely cut now? You yes, I, uh, I stopped. I do go back to my dialysis units and talk to the patients uh -huh. about transplants and, and dialysis and stuff like that just to let them know that there's hope. You know, and also then, also when you renew, you still with the driver's license. That's so important, isn't it? Yes. That people say, so let people know that you want to be yes. an organ donor. Yes. You'll get asked the, the question when you when you renew your license mm -hmm. every four years, but you can also go on to donorsone.org and sign up within 30 seconds as long as you have your driver's license number. You can become an organ donor. You don't have to wait to get it on your license. You can okay. become an organ, organ donor right away. And so I'm assuming from both of you guys that being here and being part of this market on Monday at Mondays at the market, it's important for both of you to have any venue where you can promote and and sort of let people know it's living proof yes. that this is what happens, yes. right Keith? Yes, that is so so true. 
Uh, I'm out here every Monday promoting organ donation uh, because organ donation saves lives. A lot of people don't understand that once the body is, is, is no longer here, you know, why not, why throw it away? Why give it to uh, the worms and the maggots, okay. you know, or burn them, you know, when you can save someone's life. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm out here promoting. There I don't just go. promote it here, I promote it wherever I go. And keep singing it, buddy. That's keep right. singing it. Right. And you too, Tone. Absolutely. Same thing, I was buddy. just at the, the Scranton North Pocono game and I had my Donate Life and Are You an Organ Tissue sign up in the stadium. And if people come up to me, I can talk about the subject because I lived it. There you go. Yes. Well, thank you very much. God and God bless, bless both of no, you guys. thank you. It's a wonderful thing. My two new, well, this guy's an old friend, but a new friend yes. and a new today. We have Keith and, oh, I keep doing that. You know why? Because that's it. But anyway, we have Keith and Tony, but I'm not supposed to hold the mic because I have my own. I don't Double mic, it. double mic, it, guys. That's okay. There we go. That's okay. Keith, say goodbye. Tony, say goodbye. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, I found two lovely ladies on the square today, of in, 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 with everybody else here. We have over to my far right. We have Tiffany Prado and Jennifer Coolbaugh, who are with Pinnacle Health Centers. Yes. So, tell everybody what Pinnacle does and why it's important for you guys to be part of this market. Mondays at the market. Um, what Pinnacle does is they offer um, opiate addiction treatment services, um, mainly with methadone maintenance, also Suboxone. Um, and what we do is we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling, group counseling, certified recovery specialist counseling, which is what Tiffany and I both do. Um, as for me, being a certified recovery specialist means that I'm also in recovery myself. So um, we find that it's very... Um, Important, it's very attractive right? to our clients when they not only can they get the clinical services that they need, but they can also feel that one on one, that connectedness with somebody else in recovery. And you have the empathy for what they're going through because you know what you've been through. Yes. Yeah, it's important. Mm -hmm. So, Tiff, the ability to, to be here and to, to try to collect information and give people your information is so important for any business to have people just walking around and, hey, I can help you. Think about us if you need help or if you know somebody. So, that kind of outreach, do you do this often or is this one thing that you really like to do? We do this a lot. Um, half the day we spend in the office um, meeting with clients and doing what we can for them there and then the other half our clinic closes at uh, 11 o'clock so after 11 me and Jen are usually out and about doing outreach whether it be here or um, any recovery events going on in the area we spend a lot of time at Kirby Park um, we were just at the suicide awareness walk out of the mm -hmm. darkness um, we have the armed walk for recovery coming up next Sunday yep. this Sunday coming mm -hmm. up this Sunday coming up um, we also go to um, the, the trenches, I we, guess you could say, yeah. where the homeless are. Mm -hmm. and To get, because it's so important for you to reach these people, mm -hmm. because what an epidemic mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. has become. And it, I'm going to say, I'm just going to use our region because I can't say for the rest yes. of the country. <laughs> but this region is so, so inundated with this, with to, this crisis. It's a crisis. And, yeah. and you guys are trying to help and do, and again, you knowing, anybody knowing what it's like to be part of any type of an addiction mm -hmm. and to be able to share your story and make them feel a little more secure has got to be so much better. Yes. You know, it's just a better feeling. And do they, how do you think? Do they react to you a little bit differently, do you think? Um, I find when we meet with our clients um, within the office, um, they, they do tend to uh, open up a little bit more with Tiffany and I. Um, and I think it's because they know that we've been there and um, the reason, you know, we've all used and um, it, it doesn't matter what or how much, it's, it was the feelings behind it and the feelings behind any type of addiction are the same. It's the, it's the feelings of fear and guilt and um, the embarrassment of coming forward. Yes, mm -hmm. and the consequences that we must face, and yeah. that's part of that's part of the recovery process is getting honest and accepting your consequences. And I think it's um, sometimes it's easier for our clients to identify with us because they know that okay, you did it. Uh, tell me how you did that. Yeah, exactly, and they can you, the, the help they need then is right there for them. So thank you, girls, for joining us today. I found two other lovely ladies on the park today. Two Irish chicks. They're so cute. Next to me, to my right, we have Michelle Gilligan. Yes. I love it. <laughs> I could sing the song. I want to start. Go ahead. I, I, I won't. I won't do it. I won't. I won't do it. But I she because she said just like the island, and I love it. Yes. 
just like the island. three hours. Tour. Tour. Come on, Michelle. All right. <laughs> Michelle is an RN with the wellness program at the YMCA Wilkes-Barre. And the next to her, we have Michelle Mooney, who is with Mooney. Nell. Who, Moody. Mooney. Right. Nell, didn't I say Nell that? Nell Mooney. You yeah. said Michelle. 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 Nell. See? <laughs> Nell. You edit yeah. this, right? You know what? Now I can do Dudley <laughs> Do-Right with the Nell. So <laughs> Nell Mooney, she is with the YMCA. She's a trainer. They have a great program. Tell everybody a little bit about what goes on at the Y. An, an RN on staff, I love it. it. This is wonderful. And then the trainer to coordinate. Tell everybody what you do. Okay, so what we do is we have two programs in the cardiac direction and we also have Breathing Easy. They are run by myself and Nell. And what we do is we monitor vital signs, EKGs, pulse ox. We send all of that information to your physician. Um, we also, Nell develops a training program specific to the person coming in the Y. If you're a member of the Y, then it's only $20 a month. If you're not a member, then it's $40 a month, so you don't necessarily have to be a member. But there's constant communication with your physicians as needed. We've picked up on things where heart rates are very low. We're able to contact the doctor, make sure that you're seen. Um, what else, Nell? Uh, we have a lot of patients that progress throughout their training program. Uh, I had a certain gentleman that started off, he was uh, started out in a wheelchair, and now he's down to just a cane, and he's benching about 240 pounds now. <laughs> Uh, he, I mean, he went from just being able to do Cybex machines to being actually to do a lot of free weight movement. Um, so, I mean, if you are dedicated and if you want to, you know, better your your well-being and your health, you can just, do it. Yeah, you can look into How it. How old and, is this guy? Did you say? Oh, he's probably in his forties. Yeah, yeah. Wow. He suffered a stroke, and um, you know, now he's he's just getting around like anybody else. I, that is unbelievable. Yeah. So, tell everybody why. And again, I used to belong to the Scranton Y. I was on the board. We didn't have an RN working for working for the Y. Um, maybe they do now. I don't know. But I think that's incredible. When I said to you, do you work for the YMCA? I mean, that's, that's a great step forward to be able to work with trainers and everything else because it all blends together for a better way to live, right? At the Y, your philosophy is, is a better community and all those mm -hmm. wonderful things that go along with it. Correct. Well, it's a wellness program. So it, we call it in the cardiac direction and we call it breathing easy, the two components, lungs and heart. But it's actually for anyone who wants to be well, if you want to lose weight, if you just want to feel better about yourself and you want more guided information. You, you want someone to be there. Um, maybe you had a pacemaker put in. Maybe you just are, I don't know, 40 pounds overweight and you feel like, well, I want my blood pressure watch because my pressure has gotten high with the weight gain. Mm -hmm. Then that's what we do. We were able to actually help the people to get better with the guidance of the doctor as opposed to just coming in and saying and doing what you think you can do right? right you think you can do and we, we push it when when you get to that point of a plateau then now we'll up that program and we push it even further and we make sure that you're safe while doing it okay well that's very important i mm -hmm. think it's wonderful mm -hmm. so the importance of the why to be here on mondays and to get to the public for someone who may not, you know, you're, you're, you're joining the Y and you want to be physically fit, you just want it for whatever your reasons, you offer so many different things there. What, what would you tell people who are coming here? They're seeing you out, they're seeing what you do. Does it make a difference, do you think, when you go to these places for outreach purposes? Well, I only started with the Y in June, mm -hmm. so I do think it makes a difference. I was on another program and I did get some response from that. We're just hoping to continue to build the program. I mean, we want people to come in and they want to, we want them to utilize us because there is nowhere else in Wilkesbury where there is a Y on uh, staff uh, at a, a, at a, a nurse. gym. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'm a registered nurse. Um, I have worked critical care most of my career, so I know how to read EKGs and we have an EKG machine. So if there was a problem, we hook you up. Um, I come with a lot of experience. I'm 18, 18 years a nurse now, and um, I worked from here all the way down to Philadelphia at the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center. Good so, for you. Well, they're very fortunate yes. to have you, Michelle. <laughs> and you too, Nell. Thank you. So see, we say Michelle Gilligan, mm -hmm. Gilligan's Island. 
and then we have Nell Mooney, and she is, and I said, Nell, you don't remember, you don't remember Dudley do right, do you? No. You guys both, do you remember Dudley do right? Okay, well, his girlfriend's name was Nell. Her name was Nell, and that's how he said it. So anyway, that automatically triggers memories. So thank you girls for being part of this thank today. Thank you for having thank us. Thank we you. really appreciate it. Michelle and Nell. Hi, I'm with Sharon Whitebread, who is here with Caring Communities. Karen, Sharon, will you tell everybody what your business actually does? Um, Caring Communities is a public health agency. We cover 12 counties um, in northeastern and north central Pennsylvania. So you'll find us in Luzerne, Lackawanna, Wayne Pike, Susquehanna, Wyoming, um, Columbia, Montour, Northumberland, Bradford, Tioga, and Sullivan counties. Can you say those all again? Oh my God! <laughs> it is quite. It's, it's quite wow. a few. We have a very dedicated staff that go, travels throughout all of the 12 counties, and uh, and our focus is uh, public health public health concerns that affect those 12 areas. So our focus is on HIV, hepatitis C, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about getting that word out? How do people know they can come to you if they have an issue? Are you looking to, to help people who don't know where to go if they think that's an issue? Or what, where, what, do you, what would you want the public to know from this? Well, we take several different avenues in reaching out to the community. More so, we want to make collaborations with agencies, um, facilities, businesses that um, come in contact with our higher risk populations. Um, higher risk populations are actually defined as those people who may be least likely to access those types of services on their own. Okay. Um, so, but you'll also find us in, in very general population areas distributing our information as well because we don't want stigma of, of these public health concerns to remain. Um, it, it doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter if we're in a high risk category um, or if we are someone who is married at home with children. Uh, the CDC recommends that we are all tested once a year for all of these health care concerns um, on a yearly basis. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I don't think people know that. They do not. They don't know that. And uh, so we want to make sure that, you know, a lot of times people think, well, you know, if I'm in this particular situation, I'm completely safe. I don't need to worry about that. There is a lot more to um, to it than than the surface. And education. sometimes you think that you do, but you don't really know. Correct. Right. On some on some things that you really think, oh, I, this, I think I'm good here. And you just don't know those things. Correct. And it's not just about our testing program. We also offer case management services for those who are affected by HIV. Mm -hmm. um, so there are programs that were put out there to um, provide support for those who are suffering, you know, with, with HIV. Now, I know hepatitis C is really seems to be something that everybody's talking about. It's very topical. HIV, how is that? It seems like things are not, obviously, there's still an issue, but things have gotten better, don't you think, through education and treatment and awareness? Do you believe that or am I off on well, that? Well, yeah. that's what you would believe when you hear this stuff. That, that's the impression. Okay. The impression is, is that, you know, we don't talk about it. So since we don't talk about it, everything must be good. Okay. Um, that is not the case. Um, they research, you know, where we were at with all of our cases of HIV on a national level. And um, from onset, when someone is first diagnosed with HIV, only one third of those who are initially diagnosed actually reach out for medical care within the first year. So there's two thirds. Uh, of those who are affected with HIV not accessing services and it's for a variety of reasons it could be transportation uh, the misunderstanding of the costs of uh, programs that are available perhaps they don't think that there is a, an agency that's close enough to them and and we as caring communities we travel to meet people in their neighborhoods in their own neighborhoods which is wonderful yeah they don't so have they to feel worry. yeah so they if they aren't the type who maybe would go out to something like this or any other place where you have outreach you go to that Absolutely. Which is wonderful. Absolutely. And how many years have you been in business? Uh, Caring Communities started in the early 90s. Uh, they actually started as a volunteer-led grassroots organization uh, in response to the HIV epidemic at that point okay. when everyone was in crisis mode and they're like, oh my gosh, what is this and, mm -hmm. and what are we going to do? So now um, it is a uh, full nonprofit organization covering those 12 counties with four locations and uh, we have a very 
well experienced staff regarding you know the public health concerns that we deal with. Well I can tell that you are. You're a great interviewer and <laughs> and you were so nervous do I have to start to and look at what you did. You did a wonderful job <laughs> in getting the information. Where's your office locally? We are located right here on Public, public Square. Square. Yep. Okay. Um, we are in the Luzerne Bank building that's 6769 Public Square on the fifth floor uh, suite 508 and then our other locations are we have one in Hazleton we have an office in Berwick, and our newest office is in Tawanda. Okay. Well, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Again, right. I'm here with Sharon Whitebread from Caring Communities. Thanks for watching, everybody. As we conclude our day here at Public Square in Wilkes-Barre for the Mondays at the Market, it is a wellness program that we brought to you a whole host of people who told you a little bit about what they're doing here and why it's important for them to be here. Again, this is sponsored in part by CHS and is brought to you by the Lackawanna and Luzerne County Medical Society. We'll see you next month.